some of our technological progress has been very empowering, right? I mean, not to idealize the living in a village life without electricity, without heat, without some of the comforts that we've come to appreciate in life, refrigeration or transportation or the ability to communicate, right? And so people from, from the progress side will be like, well, what are you talking about? Do you want to go back to living in mud huts, so on and so forth, right? And that we have been able to address certain diseases that, you know, have been, you know, a scourge in humanity, and we've learned how to be able to address them. Where do we find the line of where progress is something that is something is something that we can truly embrace that isn't leading us towards that end point, which is something that we don't want. What is a, mm -hmm. what is a narrative of progress that truly is rooted in our human values and how do we organize around that, right? Because we need to organize around something. Otherwise we're gonna be in these two camps all the time. Okay. Um, so just to start where you began, um, in a time of the breakdown of sense and meaning, uh, totalizing theories such as conspiracy narratives have a great appeal because they replace the certainty that the uh, narrative of progress once gave us, the narrative of ascent, with a new certainty. And it explains everything and you, you know, don't have to be uh, unsure of what the world is and who you are anymore. Uh, however, that's not actually really a step into the unknown. And I think that, that like the question that you raised, you know, what about good progress? And certainly we don't want to go back to living in mud huts. Again, as with glyphosate or as with vaccines, you can't take these things you can't isolate them as variables. So, okay, if we can hold everything else constant, then I would rather live in my nice house here in rural Rhode Island than I would in a mud hut without electricity and running water in rural Rhode Island in this society as we know it. But I don't know, have you ever lived in a mud hut in places where everybody lives in a mud hut, where there is no running water, but everybody goes to the village well, and that's where social life happens. I was um, on our online community, somebody told a story, actually, she was working in development, and they went into, into some village in Africa, and they're like, guess what, everybody? We're gonna make your lives better because we're gonna bring running water to every house. And the villager said, no, we don't want that because what holds our village together is everybody goes to the village well. Okay, in my neighborhood here, I don't have a village well. And when the hurricane hit a couple weeks ago, there was no running water. It was a pain in the ass. Couldn't wash dishes, couldn't flush the toilet, you know, because our, our well is one, is, we have our own well, it's electric. Um, okay, so hold all that constant and yeah, I want running water. Yeah, I want electricity. Yeah, I want uh, you know, I don't want to live in a mud hut, but that's too narrow a question. Really, the question that that the current crisis is opening up is how do we want to live? What do we want to true ourselves to? Exactly, exactly. So, like, if you want to find the happiest people in the world, I bet that they live in mud huts. Read about the Hadza, you know, read about the Cairo. Uh, I was, uh, Stella was telling me about, about, the greeting, way people greet each other uh, in the Andes, uh, where, where coca is a sacred plant and you, you run into somebody you haven't seen for a while and you don't just say hello and shake hands. You do a whole ceremony where you, where, where you share coca leaf, you chew it together, like saying hello takes half an hour. Right, but that happiness is, is, is because of the way that they are embedded in relationship between themselves, between the land and between each other. Right, right? I mean, so then the question is, and, and so you you ended your your question to me with how do we how do we, um, for me it's a question of any choice any change that I'm contemplating is it a step toward the restoration of relationship to other humans to to the world through my senses or is it a step away from that 
which timeline is it on? Is it on the timeline of separation and control? Or is it on the timeline of reunion?